The BRSCC BMW Compact Cup is brought to you by Nankang Tires and Gas Shops. Hello and welcome to another eventful weekend of the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup. This weekend we're in the very sunny Cheshire countryside at Alton Park. As you can see, we've got Stephen Daly putting it on pole for the first race of the weekend. However, after a very eventful weekend at Castle Coombe, we've seen Owen Hunt has fall down the charts and the standings, but it has meant Matt Parks has actually been put into second position in the standings so far. Now we're going to have a quick look back at the championship because we've had action-packed drama from day one with the points just not giving a full representation of what's happened. So let's have a look at the story so far. The 2018 season has provided us with some of the most memorable racing in the history of the championship and it all started at a chilly Brands Hatch with a double race victory for the reigning champ Stephen Daly. All eyes though were on the fight for second place in both races between Owen Hunter and Ian Jones. It's a battle that's raged on all season long and at Brands Hatch Owen was able to pull off two near identical manoeuvres to take a pair of second place finishes away from his sparring partner. Great racing between the two of them and that was set to be a theme for the year. At Snetterton though it was a new name who made their way to the top step of the podium with Matt Parks who had been knocking on the door of a victory for the better part of a full season finally getting his first victory by slipping past Stephen Daly in an epic contest, a four-way fight for the win between Daly, Owen Hunter, Ian Jones and eventual race winner Matt Parks. After Matt had got the race lead in this first race of the day, he was never headed, but Stephen Daly briefly found himself dropping down to fourth position and looking at a possible finish outside of the podium positions. He would eventually work his way back through to second place, taking some valuable points, but the rest of the field were proving wasn't going to have it easy this year. Cadwell Park was the scene of the next titanic duel with the usual suspects all at play at the front of the field. Owen Hunter spent much of the race stuck behind the reigning champion's car and unable to find a way through. He got alongside on the outside line down towards the mountain but Stephen Daly locked up, ran wide and forced Hunter across the grass. A fantastic bit of car control for the youngster but he did lose out on the chance to win the race and nearly lost second place to Matt Parks. Or so it seemed, but then Owen Hunter fought back, got back onto the tail of Stephen Daly, and with two wheels on the grass at the daunting Chris Curve, he moved his way back into the race lead. It looked as though he had the pace to pull away. Surely Owen was home and dry, but things are never that simple in this championship, especially when you've got Stephen Daly breathing down your neck. The slightest of mistakes exiting Mansfield meant that he lost momentum, and Daly was right back on his tail. Contact was made, bits of... BMW flew across the Cadwell Park circuit, but Hunter held on for the race victory. It all came to a head though, last time out at Castle Coombe, with Ian Jones making his mark on the championship and getting to the lead early doors. Stephen Daly was busy trying to fend off everyone else for second place, while David May was also getting in the hunt, much improved as the year's gone on. He survived this tack with Paul Hinson, and that wasn't to be the last time they came close together in this race. Stephen Daly was throwing everything at trying to get the race lead away from Ian Jones, even trying around the outside at corners you just can't go around the outside of. Eventually, that would allow Owen Hunter through into second place, allowing him to do battle with Ian Jones for the victory. David May and Paul Hinson, though, were continuing to provide entertainment, the battling behind leaders often equally as intense as the fighting right at the front of the field. That, though, all got a bit too intense at Castle Coombe, as Owen Hunter and Ian Jones not once, but twice made contact, the second time putting Ian Jones into the tyre wall and out of the race, and sending Owen Hunter out of the championship equation with a disqualification for that contact. So, the cars lining up on the grid then ahead of the first race here at Alton Park, with Stephen Daly on the pole position, alongside Ian Jones on row one, Ben Huntley and David May row two ahead of Matt Parks and Tom Griffiths, 
with Owen Hunter down on the fourth row of the grid. Now, he continues his Friday testing woes. He had an accident in testing last time out at Castle Coombe. Well, this weekend, it was an engine failure, so they've had a complete engine change overnight. They're not entirely sure whether that engine's going to be quite as quick as the original, though, so we'll watch out for what progress Owen can make, if any. It's another packed grid, though. 33 cars, another sensational entry in the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup, and they're rounded out by Aaron Morgan, who had his lap times disallowed from qualifying. Uh, and so he starts at the back and with a 10 second uh, start penalty as well. So he'll set off a bit later than the rest of the field, which gets away now as the red lights go out. We're away in racing at Alton Park. Aaron Morgan has to sit and watch everyone else disappear up the road. But Stephen Daly is hoping to disappear up the road himself. He's got the race leader away from Ian Jones and Matt Parks off the line. So the top three in grid order at the start. Few drivers running wide over the grass on board with Brendan Murphy, who has a great view of a brilliant tank slapper there from uh, Wayne Flint, which he saves nicely. And the field now descend upon Cascades for the first time of asking. Gordon McMillan there going up the inside of uh, Paul Hinson on the run out of Cascades. On board with Robert Marshall, one of our Scottish drivers making the trip a little bit further down south than usual uh, to race in the uh, UK Championship. But we're side by side for third place as David May goes around the outside of Matt Parks. Well, David had his first taste of the podium with a third place last time out at Cascades. Coombe, and he wants more this weekend. He's back into that third position again now. Back with Robert Marshall, who dives to the outside of Phil Sharp and tries to gain another position as well. On, I think that was Andrew Prince going into uh, Shell. So Robert Marshall making some really nice progress on the uh, first half a lap or so here, but the leading two making a slight break now. Daly ahead of Jones. Back with Marshall, who heads down in towards the Britain chicane, applying the pressure now to the next group of cars in front of him, and he's got a good exit there, and looks like he's going to make another move there on the run over the hill. Side by side for the race lead though, and Ian Jones is going for the race lead, and he takes the race lead down towards his lops. Fantastic bit of driving that from Ian Jones. I think he caught Stephen Daly a bit unawares there, but Ian Jones always does go well here at Alton Park. Remember, he had that big accident here 12 months ago. They got the car repaired for race two, and he was still on the pace before he got excluded because well, the car was falling apart around him, really. Robert Marshall, unfortunately, having made all of that ground at the start, has now started to slip backwards again with a mistake at the uh, Nickerbrook corner. But the leaders turn their way out of Druids with Ian Jones leading, Stephen Daly in second position. And Stephen won't be wanting to stay in that second position for too much longer. Down towards Lodge. Is he close enough to have a go? Not quite. And so Ian Jones hangs on to the race lead. David May third. Fourth is uh, Matt Park. And fifth for Owen Hunter. Now, Owen Hunter started this race eighth, remember, uh, after um, losing that engine yesterday. So Ian Jones, uh, sorry, uh, Owen Hunter, excuse me, into the top five now. Um, didn't realise, uh, did, didn't really know whether that engine was going to be... Um, as quick as his original engine was, but he's just grateful, I think, to have an engine in there. And having been out, back out on the track, of course, that disqualification from uh, Castle Coombe last time out has put him out of championship contention now, but he can still go out there and try and win some races, and that absolutely is the target for Owen Hunter over the remainder of the season. The exclusion is... Um, painful because he can't count it as a dropped score so it drops him down into fifth in the points now um, on uh, total points actually sixth when you take drop scores into the equation on drop scores Stephen Daly has nearly a 30 point lead over Matt Parks in second and Ian Jones only a point behind in third so this race win that Ian Jones is going for here could prove to be really important if he can get it on board briefly there with Keith Towers who's got Robert Marshall applying the pressure now heading in towards uh, the shell hairpin but the leading two as was is now a leading three because David May continuing this real upturn in pace that he's had really ever since the start of the season in fairness but as the, as the got into the middle part of the year he's come alive and that first podium at Castle Coombe you sense might well be the first of many and uh, David May who is fourth in the championship going into this race he can't win the championship anymore this year realistically but next season absolutely has to be one of our contenders for the title you'd imagine there goes Ben Huntley working his way through Nickerbrook now Ben started um third on the grid and has slipped backwards slightly since the, uh, the lights went down to the start of the race. Robert Marshall who's been up and down like a yo-yo in this race so far hasn't he? He's got Ray McDowell behind him, the car that was previously competed in by Joe Wigan a couple of years ago to a race victory. The leading group of cars are going to be ever longer now actually as they make their way up through Druids and back down towards um, Lodge Corner for the second time. Ian Jones leading the way, but not by a huge amount over Stephen Daly, David May, Matt Parks and Owen Hunter. Now, it's difficult to overtake here in Alton Park at the best of times. However, Ian Jones didn't seem to find it too difficult finding away past Stephen Daly, but it does look as though Stephen 
is having difficulties finding a way back into the race lead, isn't he? And if anything, he's putting more pressure from the cars behind at this stage of the race. Through go the um, rest of the field. Since uh, Paul Pitbull going out there to Sam Carrot and Yates, and that is Gordon McMillan looking up the inside um, of Craig Jameson into Old Hall Corner. He makes that move stick. That was a nice move. Aggressive, had to get very close to the pit wall to make it stick, but make it stick he did, and he's moved up another position. I'm back with uh, Keith Towers now. They're three abreast in front of him as they drop down in towards Cascades. That's that group of drivers making their way through. And uh, the 82 car of Craig Jameson again involved in that. Runs a bit wide out onto the grass. And so too does the, I think that was the 29 machine, wasn't it? Of Andrew Prince running wide. Keith Towers will try and uh, gain ground on that group as a result, potentially, as they turn their way now into Island Bend again and up towards the uh, Shell hairpin. Fantastic racing, though throughout the field and it's these midfield battles that when you're watching trackside and when you're competing in them of course really do catch your attention yes the lead battles are always pretty intense but there is constant changing of position uh, behind and it, they never pause for breath it seems and they're side by side again there Andrew Prince with Craig Jameson who almost lost that position to Andrew then then dived back up the inside at the chicane did Andrew Prince and then uh, Keith Towers now getting a run on him coming out of the corner I think he's going to go through, is he? Andrew Prince still has the inside line, though, for the breaking zone at his lops. He'll try and fight back, but Keith Towers just moves over to the middle of the road just to dissuade him from trying to get back up the inside line. And so Keith Towers does pick up another position, and then Greg Jameson gets a wheel on the grass, and then it all kicks off again, no doubt, into the next corner. This is what the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup is all about, though. Great close quarters. Generally speaking, pretty clean racing as well. When you've got 33 cars on the track and they're all so evenly matched, you are inevitably going to have a little bit of paint being traded. But there's a lot of respect shown between the drivers. It's never intentional, that's for sure. And uh, I know that's one thing that Owen Hunter and Ian Jones were quite uh, keen to point out after their coming together last time out at Castle Coombe. I don't think either of them particularly felt that that was intentional. I don't think anyone really thinks that Owen Hunter deliberately took Ian Jones out of the race. It was just close quarters racing, and it can happen sometimes. And uh, generally speaking, the respect shown between the drivers is uh, fantastic. So Alan Corfield will be on now on board with as he defends from Gordon McMillan who qualified 10th so she, he's uh, dropped back a little bit since the uh, the start of the race leading trio though make their way out of cascades and David May definitely going with them here Owen Hunter though look is into fourth position now so Owen Hunter has found a way ahead of Matt Park somewhere out of our sight and he will now set off after the leading three. I'm sure that's uh, Simon Welch with, yes, Aaron Morgan up the inside and Simon loses it on the grass. The tyre wall is beckoning. How on earth did he keep it out of the tyre wall then? He got the car slowed down and Simon Welch rejoins with damaged pride, but not a damaged race car, which is the best news of all. And Aaron Morgan, having started at the back of the grid with a 10 second delay, doing a great job to start picking up the places now as the race goes on. We are into the second half of this race now, on board with Robert Marshall. Behind us, that looks like Mikey Doble going up the inside of Phil Sharp and leaning on him slightly coming out of the corner. Robert Marshall, meanwhile, is attacking Ray McDowell. Again, two Scottish drivers here doing battle. <coughs> back out of Britain as they go over hilltop as Paul Hinson looks up the inside of Tom Griffiths and I don't think they quite made contact but Tom Griffiths took to the grass to make sure that they didn't and will say that he was forced onto the grass therefore he's allowed to rejoin still in that position but that was for um, eighth place that they were doing battle and uh, this was a replay so Hinson up the inside well he was there in fairness Griffiths tried to turn in but I think Hinson just clipped that curve and that hopped the car out a bit wider than Paul was intending and Tom Griffiths did well there to avoid the contact but again good respect shown between the two drivers there they left each other just enough room and had Hinson not caught the curb there'd have been plenty of room to get through the corner side by side I think <coughs> leaders then turn their way back across the start finish line once again and Ian Jones continuing to lead the way over Stephen Daly in second position Stephen not really able to apply too much pressure for the time being. Paul Hinson certainly is, though. He still hasn't found a way back ahead of Tom Griffiths, but he has at least caught the number 16 car again now after Tom actually gained a bit of an advantage from that grassy moment that he had down at uh, his lops last time through. Ian Jones works his way through Cascades and back along the lakeside straight. Owen I mean, Hunter there in fourth place. Look at all this going on. Robert Marshall soaring away at the wheel. There's a spin in front of him. That's Andrew Prince who goes around spectacularly. And will he keep it out of the barriers? Just comes to rest against the barriers. But again, did a good job to avoid any significant damage there. He will select reverse gear. And 
eventually get back underway, but he has lost a lot of time as a result of that. But again, that could have been a lot worse. You run wide there at, all, uh, at Old Hall Corner, you get a wheel on the grass, it's very bumpy indeed, and it's so easy to get spat across into the uh, barriers. You can see there, he just runs wide, gets sideways. Huge tank slapper as the weight transfers from one side to the other, a full 360, and then just overcorrects slightly, and he goes back against the barriers. But uh, yeah, he barely made contact. He probably wouldn't have even felt that from inside the car, and he'll live to fight another day. So the leaders now getting themselves back together, having just said that Stephen Daly looked like he was falling away from Ian Jones slightly. He's now starting to build up another challenge, but I'm really impressed with David May. I have been all season long, but particularly in this race, because he's shown that he's got the pace to live with two of the veterans of the series. Although Stephen Daly, it's hard to believe, is only in his third year of the... Uh, Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup, a former Scottish champion, of course, before he came into this series and was immediately on the pace before uh, finishing runner-up in his debut season, won the championship, of course, last year, and now in his third season trying to defend the title, which he looks as though he might well be able to do successfully. The one thing Stephen can't afford, though, is a disqualification, because a disqualification would put him further back in the championship, and so he will be mining his P's and Q's to a certain extent, but... At the same time, if there's a chance to win the race, why not go for it? And I think that's definitely going to be the attitude that Stephen has here. On board with Robert Marshall again, who is still trying to find a way past Ray McDowell, who defends the inside line into Lodge Corner. That might possibly give the silver car with the orange wheels of uh, Robert Marshall the run on the exit of the turn, which it does. And Robert tries to get up the inside now across Deer's Leap and in towards Old Hall Corner. But Ray McDowell is determined not to leave him the gap. Eventually, though, he has to back out of that one. And so Marshall goes up the inside line as they go on to their final lap of the race now. So one more lap of the Alton Park International Circuit to go. And Marshall made the move stick and then ran wide at Old Hall Corner. And Ray McDowell simply drives straight back past him so uh, all that hard work for Robert Marshall and he just oh and then he's got dirt on the tyres as well he drifts a bit wide at Cascades he's going to do well to save that one but he does good car control but now Mikey Doble goes through Doble Jr and Ray McDowell I don't think he's best pleased with himself there that was uh, a little tiny mistake that then gets exaggerated when you have dirt on the tyres and you arrive at the next corner and get sideways again well, anyway, back with the race leaders who can, um, who will be hoping for no such dramas because Ian Jones has fended off Stephen Daly thus far and he's only got half a lap to go now, just less than half a lap to go, in fact, until he sees the chequered flag for the first time this year that he would win a race. And it's fitting almost that it comes at Alton Park, which always has been a successful hunting ground for Ian Jones. Stephen Daly will keep the pressure on there right to the flag and Ian Jones there just running a bit wide coming out of uh, Nickerbrook Corner. Need to be careful because we have seen drivers having lap times disallowed and penalties applied uh, in the past here at Alton Park for uh, exceeding the track limits. Down in towards Druids though. One more corner to go after this one and Stephen Daly is going to be close enough to have a go I think. So Ian Jones is not home and dry yet. He'll have to defend the inside line surely as they go under the Paul Warwick Bridge. Yes he does. Dives to the inside of the road. Stephen Daly goes to the outside and considered getting the cut back there, but I don't think he could quite get there. What about the exit speed? Daly's quick off the corner, but I think Ian Jones has just about done enough. He comes over Deer's Leap, he sees the checkered flag and becomes the fourth different winner this year. Ian Jones, that is retribution, I think, for Castle Coombe. He takes his first victory of the season from Stephen Daly in second, David May third, and Owen Hunter in fourth. Matt Parks is fifth, Ben Huntley sixth, Sam Carrington Yates seventh, ahead of Tom Griffiths, Paul Hinson and Gordon McMillan rounding out the top ten. Mark Skeets is 11th, ahead of Alan Caulfield, Matt Flowers, Craig Jameson and Keith Towers, whilst Ray McDowell, Mikey Doble, Robert Marshall, Chris Hack and David Sharp round out the top 20. Jonathan Atkinson, Wayne Flint, Jim Barrett, Tim Scott Andrews and Brendan Murphy are next, ahead of Nick Edmund, Mike Doble, Aaron Morgan, Andrew Prince and Martin Gadsby. Well, remarkably, all 33 finishers made it to the flag. They were rounded out by Alessandro Albano, Simon Welch and Craig Arkell, whilst David May backs up the podium finish with the fastest lap. A massive congratulations to get the paper front of Daly. You must be very thrilled with that start. Yes, um, and Stephen, his start was awesome. Um, I just had to get him on the first lap and try and keep him behind. And it was what it was. Made a stupid mistake that got him right back on my bumper, put him under some pressure, but I think he uh, gave me a bit of leniency. Stephen, that was a fantastic race. You must be over the moon. Yeah, delighted. I mean, this has been a long time coming for Ian. Delighted to see him winning eventually. I mean, I was trying trying so hard to get him, and, and to be fair to him, he, he really did put in a good performance there. Um, led the first lap, and obviously Ian came up my inside, and, and it was just 
managing from here and from there and then growing.